Well, Chad Daybell has made up his mind. It is goodbye to Lori Vallow Daybell. Uh, not so much a lot of love there anymore, at least that's what it appears on the surface. Flipping on her, saying that she's the ringleader of everything. I'm just the innocent husband who, when she said, go kill somebody, I said, what, what am I supposed to do? I guess that's kind of the argument that's being made uh, in an uh, attempt to save his life. Interesting one, indeed. Here to discuss, Javon Scott, psychotherapist and author. We've obviously been watching this one for a very long time. Are you surprised that Chad has made this move? I'm not surprised at all. It's it's pretty much what I w would expect from somebody who's psychopathic and narcissistic, speaking of narcissistic. Mm -hmm. And it is anticipated that he's going to do everything to save his skin at this point. And Lori's the fate has, you know, been cast for Lori. Lori is going to be in prison forever. Lori has lost her marbles. Not that she had it all very well put together in the first place. But yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Um, one can ponder how Lori is taking it. But I think Lori is so loopy at this point. You know, who knows what she's perceiving and thinking. It's probably... Um, not a surprise to the lawyers involved. No, no. I, and I wanted to get there with that. Since you just mentioned it, we can talk about it. The uh, the way that she's taking that news. Uh, obviously, you know, we all on the outside think of it one way, like, oh, my gosh, she must be really upset and mad and shocked. But that's not really her pattern of behavior. She finds ways to rationalize everything, everything, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and anything. So if Chad is doing this, I'm guessing in her mind, I mean, my speculation is, oh, he, he must be a zombie. Maybe uh, the uh, the spirit of, who did we have in the other one? Ned something? I always go to yes. Ned Ryerson, but that was from Groundhog's Day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that Ned something. Like, is she like, well, it's it's Phil, you know, Jones from down the road. Uh, his spirit's in me. I'm wondering how she's rationalizing something like this. She, she is very likely rationalizing it in some direction, and it could be the direction that, you know, he's a level three on the darkness scale or whatever now he's possessed. Or it could very well be that she's telling herself, but this is fine because it's all part of God's plan and I'm just accepting it. And I'm, you know, she may still be thinking that she's going to get out someday because reality testing is not something that is a gift for her at this point. She's so out of reality. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very much wondering what, uh, maybe he needs to do this to save his life. So yes, he'll say whatever he needs to, but I know that's not, who knows? I mean, it, 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 it's a, it's a not a winning battle trying to guess what's going on in Lori yeah. Ballow's yeah. mind. Other than we can, we can say with certainty that she's not responding to anything the way the rest of us mm -hmm. would be responding. Does this show us that all along, because um, we were always kind of wondering who's who's really drinking the Kool-Aid, who's believing this stuff, uh, this admission uh, by uh, Chad Daybell, does this really show us that all along he wasn't really buying his story either? It was all some sort of a ruse to, uh, to get pretty Lori uh, in his grips? It's certainly possible. And I think between the two of them, he had, at least to some degree, a better grounding in reality than she apparently does. But, you know, it's hard to say how much is he being, I would think he's being influenced dramatically by his counsel at this point. And it may be that he's just been told, you've got to do this, you've got to go this way. And in his desperation, he's going along with it. But I do think he believed his own BS, yeah. you know, for a long time to actually commit murder of children and to set up the murder of, you know, his ex-wife. I mean, this is just, well, I guess she was still his wife at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's really somebody who is perceiving the world very differently from the rest of us. And so to what degree is his thinking psychotic, part of an extreme personality disorder, which would also fit. And sometimes people can get a little psychotic with extreme personality disorders. But yeah, another trial that is going to be very interesting. Without a doubt, especially with this angle, uh, I think we're going to start to learn a lot more about Lori Vallow than we do in the past. It also does make me wonder, 
uh, are we going to see Chad, uh, or rather Lori, flipping on Chad? She still has another uh, murder conspiracy Good trial point. to face mm-hmm. in, in Arizona. And the whole time in her previous, it was very much arguing to her own attorneys, don't throw Chad under the bus. She was very mm-hmm. upset that they, mm-hmm. they alluded to that in the closing arguments. Mm-hmm. I'm curious if she's going to go down that route, because at this point, there is no defense whatsoever for her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very true. It um, involves so much strange psychology. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the straight out, we had a reason to kill people. And so we did it for financial gain or whatever financial gain was a part of it. But there were all these other layers to it. And has the passion died? Yeah. You know, between the two of them. (laughs) Well, we haven't seen any uh, romantic texts strings lately yeah um, yeah i'd I love yeah. to see a sequel to uh to that. <laughs> that was very enjoyable to uh to read um when we're talking optics here though for a jury uh in chad's case coming out right now i mean this will be presented at trial and and saying uh look i i don't want i don't deserve the death penalty because Lori literally instructed me to do everything that I did. Isn't that right? They're pretty much saying I did it. And mm-hmm. I mean, they, they walk right up to the line in the filing, mm-hmm. not saying that Lori made him kill, but she or he did what she said, basically. There's nothing that he mm-hmm. wouldn't do without her saying. I mean, that to me right now, or right there, is pretty much a shut, close and shut thing of you just admitted that you did these things. Mm-hmm. Lori instructed you to. How do you mm-hmm. go beyond that now in a defense uh, in court? Yeah, I think it's going to be hard for him to prove that Lori, um, as manipulative as she was, had that kind of power. You know, he's clearly not intellectually incapacitated. He's not floridly hallucinating. His intact reality allowed him to function adequately in the world. So it seems, again, sometimes you see these rather bizarre defenses go up and i think that's because that's all they've got you know yeah it'll be it'll be continually fascinating to watch new chapters being written all the time in the story yeah just need more of the uh what were the names elaine and or whatever in the text back and forth there yeah yeah uh i'm so sorry it it eludes me i I, such an impact yeah, no. The, I mean, we can go. There are so many weird cases, yeah. you know, and we end up talking about a lot of them. But I don't know that anything can ever top the no. Daybell case. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you want more of our interview with our guests, be sure to check out our podcast, Hitting Killers with Tony Bruschi. Just search that wherever you download podcasts and press subscribe. Also, you can check out our YouTube channel for the full video version of the interviews as well. Under the same name, Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi. Check it out, subscribe, binge, and enjoy. Thanks for watching.